This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Follow me. What is going on, YouTube? It's Brendan from Market Makers. Guys, decide which color you're going to swallow, red or blue, and do not proceed any further if you are swallowing the blue, because if you're trying to paint a macro bullish picture, it's not happening. Did you watch the press conference yesterday with Powell? Probably not, because that's like that's like water torture. You don't want to watch that. So let me recap it for you. There is no pause, even despite what the mainstream media is reporting, saying that Powell is hinting at pausing he literally said verbatim when asked by a reporter is this a pause he said this is not a pause they're data dependent meaning they may raise again they may not raise again so that's not hinting at a pause that is telling you this is not a pause but the markets always want to find something to rally on because they got to keep your money trapped in the ponzi scheme we have the regional bank sector collapsing we have the contagion spreading to pac west western alliance other banks as well guys it's a mess and we still raised rates a quarter basis point so we're at the highest rates now and oh i don't know since i guess prior to the great financial crisis had that work out <laughs> guys so you know we've been i've been showing you the trades i've been taking the trades i post in our discord which by the way you want to come trade with us uh check out our discord the links in the video description as well as pinned in the youtube comments and guess what? You do not have to pay. You can download SimpleFX or BingX. They will pay for your first month. Both of, both of them are fantastic platforms, guys. You can trade everything that I share with you here on the screen. And on SimpleFX, you get up to a $5,000 instant deposit bonus. You don't have to earn it or roll it over. It's a decentralized exchange. All of the instructions are in the video description as well as pinned in the comments. Message Lee after you do that. He'll get you set up in the Discord as well. All right. <laughs> so, so I'm in a good mood today. We got a lot of shorts and massive profits. I want to show you some of these. We're going to walk through the charts as per usual because I just want to say if you are going to only long in this market, it's always opportunities along. But the greater risk is to the downside. Reading the market and understanding where to trade will make you the most money. So if you only want to long, you may want to step away for a minute and reevaluate your life. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it. Uh, Lee and I are having some fun today. All right, so let's go ahead and start off with the S&P, guys. Remember, what's our big macro structure we're printing here? Three-day chart. Look at this. 
three day chart, we're printing our massive double top, right? We're going to go over this. So where's that going? Well, you're going to retest your base, which on the FIB structure is 3593 at the 618. But where you're going by mid June, I have 3141. Okay, give or take 150 points. So 3000 to 3300. Look what's happening here on your MFI on the three day chart approaching overbought. So this is going to play out still, I believe. I believe the economic condition is worsening. Oh, we didn't even mention the debt ceiling debate. Last time we debated the debt ceiling in 2011, the S&P dropped 18%. And um, Biden, Biden's uh, Treasury Secretary Yellen, who is also completely incompetent, and man... I don't know what the Civil War was like, but I would like to hear her stories about it from when she was a teenager, because she may be as old or older than Biden, if that's possible. I mean, I think Biden's got the Ten Commandments stuck in a, tucked in his house somewhere. He found it laying on the ground as a child. But they are old, old, old. They cannot communicate. They have no idea what's going on. I think they rely on their handlers. But both of them are painting a rosy picture. But Janet Yellen said that we could run out of money in the U.S. by June 1st to pay our debts. Again, very bearish macro factor for the S&P. Let's go ahead and get into some charts so I can stop telling bad jokes. Looking at S&P on the daily, guys, I told you this range that we've been trading just like last time, all the way back to June, the 4143, 4173, got a 9% drop in the S&P last time. And as of right now, we have what, a hundred and... 30, 120, $130 drop right now in the S&P. But I want to show you the structure here. So people are asking in the uh, comments, well, what happened with the spring equinox? Well, what happened with the pivot dates? Guys, we've been over this in many videos. I know, I know not everybody watches every video. I get it. But the pivot dates are in yellow. This is my pattern based on S&P pivots that's captured exact highs and low or within $10 to $20 of the exact high and low going back all the way to June of 2022. Okay? And so what do we have? We had our pivot, shared this with you, one of our recent trades, 9% drop. We have the spring equinox, which again is a red alert. It is not necessarily a pivot. I told you it's a red alert trend change incoming. Then we hit our pivot. Then we had a decline, reflexive rally, fell back down again. And look what we're doing. I want to show you here what we're doing. So if you look at the structure over here on the left, the last pivot point, okay? So you came up for your double top. You came down. You came back up for your high, which is this yellow line. And then you came back down. I can show you exactly where it looks like you are on this pattern. You're at this candle right here, retesting your base. You see that? Man, I got to turn that magnet off. You're retesting your base. So you're doing the same thing over here on your double top structure. There's your low, retesting your low. Okay? So here's your low, and here's your retesting your low. Not only that, it's actually kind of funny because it's the exact, exact same candle counter, right? Here in a fractal pattern. Now we need the magnet. This is your high right here. And there's your base that you're retesting three bars off your high. Here's your high right here. Here's your base. You're retesting three bars off your high. It's amazing how the market moves in patterns. I've showed you guys enough of the uh, dot com pattern versus today. Again, same exact rallies up. So you see this now. If this if this were to play out like this fractal here, that next candle, which would be what is today Thursday. I don't even know what today is. Yeah, today's Thursday. So that next candle on Friday may just be a little stubby doji, right? Somewhere down here. And then that would be potentially your Monday candle. candle, And then you're looking at going into decline. That's if that little fractal pattern plays out the exact same way. But overall, guys, this is, this is the place to be to capture these trades because I'm giving you these trades and you get even more trades on our Discord that I don't share here and that the other professional traders share as well. So right now, the S&P wants to hold this. Um, I don't think it'll be holding it for long. Again, the macroeconomic conditions are getting worse, not better. The bank issue, the debt ceiling issue, the fact that we raise rates, everything is telling you a recession is coming 100% and the market has not priced that in. I want to say one more thing. You hear all the time from these professional money managers, again, 84% of them can't beat the S&P over a 10-year period, but you hear all the time what? When they're talking about their bullish narrative, they're saying, well, the market's a forward-looking mechanism, Bob. 
it, it discounts, you know, it's already discounted the recession. That was the October low. You know, the problem, again, just statistically, looking at market history, we already know where the S&P trades in any recession, run of the mill, mild, and we're not getting a mild recession. Trust me, the Fed doesn't forecast a mild recession, and that's what you get. Remember, in the great financial crisis, the Fed forecasted no recession. If they're forecasting a mild recession, shit is going to hit the fan. I'm telling you, this is the first three sigma bubble and housing and equities and the debt market all at the same time. We've never done even two of those markets together. This is going to be huge. And we know based on market history in a recession, the S&P trades a third off its high, which magically lands you back at 3141, a third off the cycle high. Okay, so the market hasn't priced anything in. By the way, that's that's just proof in the pudding why the market declines when the Fed does something like raises rates and gives a hawkish speech, which is what I thought he would do. They're trying to spin it as dovish, saying he saying that he inferred he's going to pause. But this is why the market declines. If it was priced in, it wouldn't decline. Okay. Again, the market is made up of normal people. If you think about it, would you, would you trust like your neighbor's opinion? If you're a trader, would you trust your neighbor's opinion who doesn't trade at all on what the market's doing? No, you wouldn't. So, I mean, the market's just a reflection of the people trading in it. And most people, and I'm talking about professional money managers in the majority of retail, have no idea what's going on. And it's in the statistics, 80% of retail loses money. So why listen to your buddy that just keeps dumping money? 84% of professional guys over 10 years cannot beat the S&P. That number jumps to 93% over 20 years, okay? These guys don't have any idea what they're talking about. So that's where we're at on the, um, oh, let's look at the, where's our TA part right here. So let's look at the, let's look at the actual, how many stocks here in the S and P are above the 200 down to 45%. I think we were at like 55% last time we made the video. So we've dropped another 10% on stocks that are above their 200. Look at your money flow bearish. Look at your buying volume declining, the ratio of buying volume, but you're trying to hold this base, okay? That's what you're trying to do here. And you can see if we did come back up in the trade, guess what the trading range is gonna be, guys? The exact same it's been, 4143 to 4173. You need some major bullish momentum to break out and break that 4200. And you can see this as well, if we just wanna go ahead and do our Wyckoff type structure here. You could do something like that and do something like that. And that's basically your trading range that you're trading in. As you can see, your up thrust keep failing, your down thrust pump you up, and you're making a down thrust. So what we're looking for in a Wyckoff perspective is this should be a lower high if we're going to prepare to exit this range, okay? So you made your double top. You got the double top here. Now you want to see if you do get a rebound, this should be a lower high, and then you start breaking down, and eventually you'll start testing the base of that Wyckoff structure as resistance, which you could be doing on this candle if it does not retrace and come back into the trading range. But let's go ahead and pull a fib on this, a simple fib retracement, just going from the high here to the current low. And you're looking at your 50% retracement, basically 4,115. And of course, your 618 would be up here at 41.34. And if you've somehow got back up to your 786, then you're back in the higher end of that trading range, 41.58. So that's if you come up to that 50% retracement. Got to see what price wants to do here. If you can hold this base as you get more oversold, it could help you with a reflexive rally back to the upside. But watch that shape for the uh, lower high to come into play. Let's look at the VIX. The VIX spiked up above the 50 simple. You see that? It got all the way up to 21 spot 29. You can see the structure here The VIX is making. I told you it moves inversely to the S&P, guys. If the VIX keeps going up, you'll see prices keep going down. Why is Bitcoin still holding up so well? You know, there's a couple of reasons for this. Retail could be holding up Bitcoin. You could have Bitcoin not really, you know, Bitcoin leads and lags oftentimes. They don't move in unison necessarily. And the fact that the S&P, yes, it did have a great drop from where we traded it. I mean, it's nice to make 100 handles, 120 handles on your trade. But, you know, 
it's not a huge move yet. So the Bitcoin may be holding up in this range. This is a weekly time frame before it starts to move down. But it's building a distribution box, in my opinion. And again, looking for Bitcoin to come down to 12,000 triple eight to 13.2 by mid-June with the equities. Here you are on the daily on Bitcoin. You can see you do as well have your double top structure here that you may disjoint it as it may be. But if this is also just from basic TA perspective, guys, you have your high, your lower high. If this holds up your lower high again. So you have another double top forming right here within a larger double top. OK, so again, these are just bearish patterns. Uh, you'd want to see, obviously, a series of higher lows. Here's your low. Here's a higher low. You want this to come up and make another higher low. And then you want to see if you can start defeating that area up. You remember, I had that upside risk potential for Bitcoin at thirty one four sixty three. We got to thirty one. 140. Um, but, you know, again, I do believe this will follow equities when equities make a more definitive move to the downside, which who knows what that catalyst is going to be. Could just be time because the economy is getting worse. The macroeconomics are getting worse or it could be a major catalyst like a bigger bank failing, something like that. So let's look at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ again, guys, give you the 13.2 range up to 13.4. And we got to wherever we got 13.3. It had a nice decline here uh, down to, well, I guess the low here was just about 12,931. So a few hundred points drop on the NASDAQ. It's back into its Wyckoff trading range. Again, we've been over this many times, but I know a lot of people like visual aids. So you can see your fibs line up perfectly, essentially, with your trading range. So you've been in this Wyckoff trading range, and you're just more towards the base. So it's the same problem that you have. You have a you had a pump up here from a down thrust. You came up for an up thrust, and then you get a sign of weakness, and you're trying to hold this base and re attempt to do that again, or you're going to make a lower high and come back down outside the base. That's what we're doing on the NASDAQ, guys. So watch that. Watch that 13.2 if you do pump back up, because you could also be printing. This is your first structure here. This is a daily chart for potentially a double top. Okay. So watch these zones of resistance and support. Looking at the DAX, DAX had a nice move down after a nice move up. It did kiss 16, never got to our upside risk of 16.2. So, you know, this is a daily chart. I mean, this is a really ugly double top right now, but it's the same exact principle. This is following the S&P. Let me try to move it up a little bit. So the DAX is trying to hold 15.733. Obviously, we got a wick below it to 15.690, and it's trying to hold this uh, support area as well. And depending what time frames you go in, guys, you can always see structures within structures, but a real easy structure to see here is your double top structure. So the DAX could be rolling back up for a lower high as well, something like that before it breaks its neckline, okay? So you always get, you know, when people worry about missing trades, oftentimes there's additional opportunities. May not get that opportunity up there at 16 again, but you may get another opportunity of failure here, say at 15,850, 15,885, or if you're really lucky, like 15,927 and it comes up a little bit higher. And let's see what the DAX is doing here. Money flow just crossed into bearish. Volume momentum, barely positive. And you can see the volume ratio is pretty flat, uh, just bobbing up and down. So European ECB just raised rates today, quarter basis, uh, 25 basis points. And um, yeah, so the markets are just kind of reacting. I guess it was pretty much expected. Initially, they weren't going to raise again, and they did a quarter. So this, I nailed this trade. This trade came up here at 75.95. Posted this in the room as well as we talked about it on YouTube as well, guys. And then I even gave you the re-entry point, 75.32. Two daily candles were there before you got this further decline. So what's it doing now? Well, I mean, again, it depends what time frame you look at here, but this is one large potential double tops. So you could roll up to some level and come back down. Um, you could be making, you know, if we went ahead and threw this, I mean, your, the problem is, is your decline is still ongoing here. Yet the way I would look at this is, probably two different ways. I'd look and see where I start finding fibs that are of interest here. 74.88, 75.35, obviously that's what you hit already. And if you come down, so that's the, that's the extreme to extreme, right? But if I wanna look at this for more of an impulsive move to see where this could roll back up to, I would probably take it from here 
And now I'm looking at 74.52, 74.89. I like 786s on double top retraces. So you'd be looking at something like this if it came up to here and did something like this. Okay, and obviously you could defeat that and move up, but this is just the shape that I'm potentially looking at here. So a couple different ways you can pull fibs and see what you can get to. This has just been, you know, the, the CAC made an all-time high. This provided a great trade for anybody that took it and a re-entry opportunity, and you came down and you're holding support right around this range, but I do think you're gonna end up printing a massive double top here whether it's at 74.89 or coming up higher to re-challenge this area, okay? And a lot of that's just gonna depend on just money flows into the market and how bullish and bearish individual traders are. Let's look at any indicators we have. Volume ratio went bearish, money flow, boom, obviously that went bearish. So let's see what else we got here, guys. The Australian index, and you know we talked about this when this was up here. Right, I said, look for your up thrust up here, 73.86, the ASX 200, and you're in your white call range, made your up thrust, you failed, made your down thrust, got your sign of strength, and now you're getting your sign of weakness. You're trying to hold 71.72, but again, in a macro structure sense, what did you make? You made a head and shoulders. You see that? So your neckline is essentially going to be, well, I mean, I kind of view it like breaking Wyckoff with any type of force, but obviously you have these wicks down here, okay? And then if you just take it from this perspective, you also have, oftentimes you'll just see multiple patterns present themselves, okay? Double top, Gartley pattern, different ways to look at it, head and shoulders. But again, all the equities around the world, guys, globally, I, I'm trying to get out of the habit of saying it again all the time, <laughs> but all the equities around the world globally, they don't always track candle for candle, dollar for dollar, but most times in the major developed countries, okay, most times, especially in the Western world and throw in Australia in there too, you will see them move in confluence with each other. If if the USA is dumping, you oftentimes you'll see the Asian markets dumping, European markets dumping. The degree to which they go up or down, of course, can vary, but it's just because all these big funds, they invest globally. People now, especially now, invest globally, guys, with the apps on their phones, uh, on their computer. So you see this more times than not. So pay attention to those bearish shapes. Looking at Ethereum, it's not doing a lot since last video, guys. It's still stuck between 1929 and 1870. Again, it's going to follow whatever Bitcoin does. Um, so, you know... I'm not. I, I'm really neutral on Ethereum. Obviously, my macro view is everything's going down. I don't see a trade here on the daily. Okay, I, I don't see a trade here on the daily. Um, you know, I think you should just be patient, watch and see what Bitcoin's doing. If this got more bullish and came back up to come back into a range up here, I would be more interested in some type of trade. That's where I would be watching and focusing here. You know, if this did something like this and came back up and went to 1981, I really like 2035, like we talked about before, I would be interesting in possibly shorting at that juncture. But you really have to see more movement out of Bitcoin to see that. Let's check out our Tesla trade, guys. Again, awesome trading opportunity. Stuck at 160, just below the 161 on the 46 fib. You can see this gap here. Maybe Tesla will come up and try to fill that. We entered this at 208. So awesome profits, guys. Lots of people on our rumor in this trade on our Discord. You know, they're holding this trade for obvious reasons because of how I think the market's going or how they think the market's going. And I totally understand that because these are very weak candles here. Very weak candles here. And if these start coming down again, I'm looking for Tesla to break that 101 on the next wave down and i think it will when the markets really roll hard mstr so this is moving very closely with bitcoin we've had a couple of great entries here we shorted it up here above 333 went all the way down to 280 that's a nice 50 plus dollar move came back up gave you another re-entry opportunity oh, what did i hit at 333 again and now it's just kind of vacillating it's at 314 if this came back into the range because bitcoin showed a little bit more strength if this came back up here again i would definitely consider adding this to my list of things that are that are uh i'm i'm trading what a, <laughs> every time i talk too long i can't talk anymore 
list of things that I'm trading and hopefully profiting on. So I think this is going to easily fall. Okay. This is going to move so closely with Bitcoin. It already has, it's been very volatile. And especially when you see the indices rolls as well, roll as well, such as the NASDAQ, this is probably one of my home run trades because this thing has a lot more to give up. Okay. You're going to be coming all the way down all the way down below 80 bucks here on um, First Solar. And I set this up for you guys for at least a week in videos or maybe even two weeks. We were talking about this in our Discord forever. Shorting above 217, multiple daily attempts. And look how weak this is, guys. This is a garbage ESG company. Garbage in a sense that they don't make any money. This dropped 23% from my entry, okay? twenty. Now this is a stock, this is not a crypto. And yeah, if you're trading this with any leverage, this is a massive move. And this has a lot more to go. This had a parabolic rise. This is one of those Reddit idiot stocks, okay? It's had a parabolic rise from last summer from 60 bucks. All this is coming back, okay? All of this is coming back. All these gains are gonna come back. And when this thing comes down to where I think it's coming down, you're looking at a 70, 70, let's call it 70%, 70% drop just to get back down to those lows from which it pumped, okay? It's gonna be a massive, massive trade. So I'm really happy for everybody that got into first solar. At this juncture, guys, people are asking me if they can enter short. I, w I mean, I'm not. I, I'm not. I wouldn't do anything here. You just had a massive drop. You have a big gap here. Maybe if you came back up and rechallenged uh, 196 to 200 region to fill this gap and come up to the base of Wyckoff, that might be an area to potentially look at. But no, I would let this thing ride. And if you're not in it, I would move on to another trade. That's my strategy for how I trade. Okay. So a lot of people, well, not a lot of people, some people like to trade the trend. They'll throw little positions in as something's pumping or dumping. And, uh, you can do that. That's a valid strategy. I just personally don't trade that way. Looking at Apple guys, Apple reports after the bell. All right. So Apple reports after the bell. And this is about, I think last time I checked is about 8% of the S and P. So Apple to me is very bearish. What I'm looking to do is if Apple gets any type of, I don't know what their earnings are going to be. Okay. Let's put that out there first. Your all time high is right up here, like 182 or 180. Yeah. Basically 183. And you are trading at 165. If Apple can get to the one fib at 176, if it comes up here and struggles, Again, excellent resistance area. No closes above it here. No closes above it here. I like Apple at 176 for a downward move. Entering before that, valid strategy. But this, again, I'm focusing for my portfolio of how I trade. I try to focus on high probability trades. And if it doesn't get there and it does this and does that, well, it doesn't get there and I move on to the next trade. But I like 176. Valid as well. You could say it would be 172. You're trading at 165. So 169 would also be valid. But 176 to me would be the sweet spot. Apple is holding up. Again, the top five stocks are holding up the indices. And if Apple starts to roll, watch the big boys start to roll. Watch Microsoft. Watch NVIDIA come down even more. NVIDIA, I've been in and out of this trade, I think, a total of three or four times now. It's provided excellent moves. So let's look and see. Let's get some of these fibs off so you can see this a little bit better. We have this clearly defined range. Again, looks very similar to a Wyckoff trading range, right? Very similar. So we go ahead and put this here. I mean, the fibs defined it for you. You can look at it like this. I'm just going to line it up with the fibs so you can see the white. And then what did we do? You tried to make your Livermore pivot. We had we were trading this back and forth in the room, trading these ranges, down thrust, up thrust. And you got you finally got your pivot out. I got in here, up here. I wish I got 288. I think I got 286. But um, it went all the way up to 290 or 289. And then you try to hold your Livermore pivot to pivot to the upside, but you came down and fell down. So now what you want to do, you often see this, right? So now it's making a doji candle, had a previous doji as well. If this holds and does the double top structure, this is what you want to look for again, okay? Watch for a lower high that hits resistance. And we can pull a fib here and get some ideas of where this could potentially be. Let's get rid of this macro fib here. There we go. 
And if this does come back up before it wants to really roll down, watch your uh, watch your 284 and 286, your 618 and your 786, okay? So you'd be doing something like that, coming down, coming up, and then coming down again. And that would be printing a bearish structure basically on top of Wyckoff before you break down and potentially exit that trading range. I think NVIDIA has a long way to fall. It was up 80, 90% this year alone. And when the market rolls, these high beta stocks, guys, the stocks that have the highest PEs, they're going to roll with it okay so that's what i would look for because you're printing a doji maybe get a little bit more upward movement see if you can get back out of here get a nice up thrust make a lower high and could be in very nice trade all right guys let's take a look at the gold chart here um so guys i went ahead and entered a short above 2055 here posted it in the room we've been talking about it on the channel over and over again the volume is like one eighth one ninth of what it was previously in this exact same range actually measured it from down at this level so it's it's much smaller volume and again when i look at gold this was the pandemic spike this was peak inflation spike and look at the volume bar that was required to get this candle and then the big volume here to try to hold it and you can just see it guys look at the volume now versus the volume here so will this play out i hope so because i'm in a trade on it above 2055 i think it got up to 2070 on simple fx looks like 2067 almost here on oanda so this again is an area i like this may take time to play out. I guess you could call this the GFC 2.0 uh, spike crisis. I just don't think it's going to hold it again. My my macro view, guys, is very simple. I think this is, you know, I put out a video a couple months ago. And look at this. This is dumping even more than that. We're talking 4048, the S&P. This is the biggest wave down coming. Okay, this is the biggest wave down. It's going to be a thousand handle drop from where we hit our peaks up here. It's actually higher than that from here. It's 12 or 1300 handle drop. And I do believe we're going to repeat that crash cycle that we did in GFC with the metals. So that's what I'm betting on here. It's not a massive trade, but it is a trade that I like. And so I took it. And so I shorted up here. We'll see if this plays out. Might have some volatility. Upside risk is 21.23. And of course, downside, I mean, downside, there's just, if this does play out like I think it will, because gold fell 34% in that previous um, previous crash cycle. Where's, what am I looking for? Fib. All right. Just get our impulsive move here. If this is your high, you could watch 1943, 1909, 1866 when it does start to decline. But spiking up like this, it depends what gold does, guys. Gold spiked up and then look, just steady decline. Spiked up, volatility, but substantial decline and then fell apart. Okay, your double top structure, double top structure here. So this may come down come back up, do something like that, and then you get your decline. So this may lag behind the indices and may fall with them. Or like I told you before, if it holds up here, you know, you'll know. If it holds up here and holds above 25, 2055, gets candle closes, everything starts settling down and you get volume for your Livermore pivot, well, gold could be moving inversely to the markets, which is what the gold bulls want you to think that it's doing. And it's a valid, look, it's, it, it makes logical sense. I'm just telling from a cycle perspective is how I'm trading this. And I do think it's gonna decline. So above 2055, I like that as an entry. Silver is even more bullish here. Posted a short up here as well, based on this FIB, 25 spot 92. You're at 25 spot 94. Um, silver, silver is not, you know, silver is going to track with gold. It's more parabolic. Again, you know, I went over these numbers last time on basically every video. Gold fell 34% in GFC. Silver fell 61%. So almost almost like a two beta to gold so silver is going to pump more and dump more this fib for right now anyway seems to be holding upside risk would be 27 spot 55 if silver did want to keep moving but I, my thesis would be if gold does start to fall which i think it will after it has its volatility silver will as well and silver seems to be you know it's it does its little spikes a lot more so silver makes an extreme comes down comes up comes down comes up did it over here, made a distribution box, did it over here before it fell. And you could see the same thing here. Okay. This may take days 
behind the indices, or all of a sudden you could have a big drop when you wake up one morning. Just some food for thought and some trades to think about. Smash the like button, guys. Hit the subscribe button. And I should have said this in the beginning, but definitely welcome to all the new members that joined our Discord. Our Discord has over 13,000 people, guys. You can get in for free. You can't even do better than that. How can you, how can you do better for free? And you get seven indicators for free when you join. Custom made by Fractal Trade 15. Hope to see you guys in a room and I'll definitely see you next video and watch the markets could be a bloodbath on the horizon.